Okay, it went down into the 40s last night, so it's time to get ready to go riding in the cooler temperatures. Now, over the decades, I learned a lot about how to deal with cold temperatures while riding a motorcycle. I generally, I commuted for uh, over 40 years by a motorcycle for about eight months a year. Uh, as long as they weren't salting the roads, I would be riding my motorcycle. But once they throw salt starting in the end of November, then I would park the bike until uh, middle of May, no, middle of March, uh, or uh, beginning of April generally, they're done with the salt. I won't ride my bikes in the salt. These coatings, these uh, motorcycles aren't really, the aluminum is not really salt resistant. It, it starts to look pretty bad. All right, so my cold weather gear. All right. Uh, of course, you have to have a jacket. I like the ones that have the over flap. Because if you just have a zipper, the air gets through the zipper. So I like a, this type of a jacket that has an overflap. And this has, of course, a liner, and it has full length liner, not just a vest. It goes all the way down the arms. That's important in cold weather. And this one has a nice little feature. It has this neck wrap that's attached to the liner. You wrap that around your neck. Big help in cold weather. Also, it's nice to have a kidney belt. A kidney belt doesn't keep your kidneys in place. A kidney belt keeps your kidneys from getting cold. So you need that little bit of extra length in the back. That's what a kidney belt is for. Keep your kidneys from getting cold. Don't ask me why. I commuted with this arrow stitch one piece suit that you just step into. Just put your right leg in first, then the left leg, and then pull this full length zipper from the heel, from your ankle all the way up. After you slip your arms in there and you're done, you're ready to go. And it, it's supposed to be waterproof, it's not. It's water, it slows it down a lot. After about an hour, it's, it's, it's seeping in where it's folded. You know, it's, it's lined with, uh, what's that stuff called? Gore-Tex. And Gore-Tex does not waterproof anything. It just slows it down. And eventually, like where your foot bends behind your toes as you're walking in boots that have waterproof claimed Gore-Tex lining, that ends up because your, your foot, every step is pushing out air and then sucking in there and pushing out and sucking it it ends up wicking water in so hang on to your receipt when you buy a pair of boots that are guaranteed waterproof because they ain't i was a meter reader for many years when i was first hired by the company i just retired from and uh i've tried every gimmick to try to waterproof my shoes mink oil neat's foot oil snow seal that you heat up with a hair dryer and melt it in uh silicone I've bought waterproof boots that were expensive, and uh, there is no such thing. The only thing that's waterproof is rubber, and uh, you can't wear rubber because your perspiration makes your feet almost as wet as walking in wet grass. That's when my feet would be wet, not in the winter, not when it's raining. It's every morning walking in the dew on the grass uh, to read people's meters for years. And uh, my feet were generally soaked by 9 o'clock in the morning. This is another arrow stitch option with the one-piece suit. Uh, this is like, well, I forget they call that a polar fleece or something. It even has zippers under the arms from there to there. Uh, to allow perspiration to escape. It's a nice, nice piece. It, uh, in the cold weather, it's uh, very welcoming. Especially if you have an electric vest on. This is an electric vest made by Witter. I like theirs the best. Has a thermostat in the pocket. 
and I don't think the thermostat is that necessary because you either turn it on or off. There's the thermostat. But this has a heated collar. Uh, you don't know the joy of the heat coming from that heated collar till you're cold and you turn that on and you feel that. It feels like sunshine on a warm day in the summer when you turn that. It, these don't have to be thick because they don't retain heat. They create heat. They have a wire running through the, through the inside there and uh, that gives off heat and uh, it runs through the collar. Very nice. I would commute in the mornings with that suit over that vest, over my work clothes uh, when I was an electrician. I'd just wear my electrician uniform and uh, put on my vest, put on my air stitch suit, and uh, I would go to work like that. Uh, that. That suit has hundreds of thousands of miles on it. I would wear it until it got hot. Then I would just wear a, uh, a leather jacket to work. Okay, nothing stops wind like leather. So I'm going to be wearing these leather pants today. Leather jeans. I also have these Bellstaff waterproof, they claim. Uh, motorcycle riding pants. They have some kind of type of fancy liner in the bottom of the cuff for the last foot. And they seal around your ankles pretty well so you can uh, almost tuck them in. They got hip pads and knee pads in them. They're pretty nice. Uh, I had them for for years. I had this for years, but I always ended up wearing the the aero stitch suit instead of those. So these are don't have many miles on them. All right, basic wear would be a long sleeve turtleneck. This is like a t-shirt, like one of the better t-shirts. They're a little thicker material. Oh, I have a bunch of these. And I just change them every day. I put one on, put the collar up. A lot of times that's enough. You lose most of your heat from around your neck, uh, whether you're riding a motorcycle or not. Okay, I wear this Welder's Nomex hood. I've worn this for years. Used to be a welder. And uh, that makes a difference. Then you can buy this sock. Wear around your neck, pull it up over your head, put it over your ears. I wear that one. I carry one on each bike. Then I have this thing. It was made by a company in Arizona, Sane Gear, S-A-I-N-G-E-A-R. They used to make electric vests custom made to your size. And this was one of their accessories you could buy. And this attaches to the helmet with Velcro around the front. It was called a leather neck. And it's pretty damn good at stopping the wind. And uh, what I've done to it is I've put a piece of Velcro around the back and I just wrap it around my neck. I don't put it on my helmet. And then I attach it with this Velcro behind my head. Works pretty good. It stops the wind. Because that's where you lose most of your heat, around your neck. When you, uh, like I said, when you, uh, when you're in cold temperatures, your hands and feet get cold first. Well, why is that? That's your body going into survival mode to retain body core temperature. And the first thing it does is shuts the circulation to your feet and your hands off. So if you retain core heat with an electric vest and no leaks around the neck and, or up the sleeves uh, and with a polar fleece, just retain heat from the neck down to your waist your hands and feet won't get cold not as fast anyway 
speaking of your hands, I have electric gloves. They're a little bulky. They're made by Witter. Uh, I think these are more for the snowmobile people. But I don't really... They're not my favorites because you can't feel the brake and the clutch as well. And the clutch is a little bit further of a reach when you have that... Uh, that bulk wrapped around the grip. But I wore those for years. I had all my gauntlet gloves, I dug them out. Uh, I like these because these are one layer thick on the palms, so you can feel the heat coming through. You can feel the heat coming through the one layer palms. And then in the back, there, there's like a, a lining of foam rubber under there, so that kind of it's like an insulation. It keeps the heat in your glove instead of losing it through through just a single layer. A single layer palm, double layer on the back, and they're gauntlets, so you can put them over the outside of your sleeves. Just like these. These are cheap gloves. I bought these in the 90s. And uh, these have hundreds of thousands of miles on them. These are the ones I always take with me because they work. They keep the wind from going up your sleeves. Uh, these here, they're called high pour. But they have some kind of a lining like you see in tennis shoes today. Uh, you know, the ones that come up over your ankles, they have some like padding inside them, all of them. They're all so hot. Well, that's the way these are. They get clammy inside even from day one and these are supposed to be waterproof so that may be a Gore-Tex lining not my favorites uh, and you know what they fit like an old tea bag they don't really form fit they don't fit like a glove like they should but anyway one more thing when it's cold and you've got your full face helmet on, your face shield just fogs up. So I reclaimed this. I used to be an asbestos worker right out of high school. Got out of high school on Friday. Monday morning I was working six tens in a power station with asbestos. And we wore respirators, at least I did. All the old timers didn't wear respirators. They would just breathe through their mouth chewing tobacco. And that was their respirator. And I made just enough to buy my GTO convertible. And I quit that job when I found out only three guys ever lived long enough to retire. So I converted this from a dust mask, respirator mask. I took off everything, the suspension, the straps around the head, the thing that this mounts to, the filters, and I put tire patches over the two holes that used to be the inlet valves. And this was the exhaust valve here that you, when you would breathe out, it would come out the bottom. Well, this fits perfectly on your face. This flexibility here makes it conform to your face perfectly, and it's an interference fit. Your helmet presses that a little bit back, and it makes that seal. So I have sneezed in my helmet with this on and it will not fog up, even on a 30 degree day. So if you ever see one of those uh, painters dust masks or if you know a place that sells them, this, this works. Uh, when I road raced, I used to have to smear uh, shampoo. It was an old Formula One car driver's trick on in cold wet damp weather was to get a drop of shampoo and smear it on the inside of the windshield of the uh, face shield of their helmet but they still fogged up and as advanced as the technology is in formula one i'm surprised nobody has thought of this for those guys in that in those uh, foggy face shield days but uh, anyway that's a basic outline of my cold weather gear. I had to dig it all out and now I'm ready.
it's uh, October, approaching the middle of October here. And we're not going to get many more days like this. It's beautiful today. I'll be with you in a minute. And uh, I'll be out there. There's a lot of festivals going on right now. And it's Saturday. And uh, there's probably going to be only about, if, if I'm lucky, three or four more Saturdays with this kind of weather. So uh, I'm going to get going here. I'll see you there.